Welcome back. Here we are. Let's fly Kerbal Space Program. Let's not waste any time. Let's get in here. Okay, so we've run into some problems with this thing. This, um, is that the most recent design that I saved? Oh, oh, no, this is, okay, okay, yeah, this is the design that we have that thing stratified back there. Uh, we still ran into some problems last time. I've had a mild brainstorm. See, so while I'm at work, work um, I go to work and I do things there. I, I do unpleasant things in exchange. They give me some money uh, to, to make the unpleasant tasks, which I do slightly less unpleasant. I think about Kerbal Space Program while I'm at work. So, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what, let me see, did we do that last time? I, I, I did some playing around in here. I decided I got rid of those those other engines. I'm just going to, uh, when I was experimenting around, we're gonna put, put the regular C7 jet engines back on this thing. But actually, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to completely get rid of the mothership and I'm gonna redesign it. I'm still committed to using this this whole mothership design, but we're going to do something a little bit different. Let's go back in here. Take our Mark III hole. I went in and I did a repeat of the same trick that I had previously, that I'd done previously. Uh, I manually edited just one line in the config file for one part to turn fuel cross feed off. The part that I did is C7's RCS tank. I am going to divide the mothership up into different, into separate fuel tanks simply by putting some RCS tanks on there. And I'm going to use fuel lines. This will, um, and then I'll put some, a whole bunch of fuel lines on here. In the th in theory, this will keep the the weight. This will keep the the fuel burn fairly even throughout the entire vehicle. Okay, let's see, we'll put another RCS tank. So the, instead of, of having, um, you know, starting out with all of the fuel, uh, fuel distributed throughout the whole vehicle, and then as, as it burns fuel, um, as, it, as it burns fuel, then the, all the, the, it gets lighter in the nose, and so all the weight is in the tail, in theory, the overall balance of this vehicle should remain pretty much the same. Um, okay, let's do it this way. And another one of those adapter what's it's there. Okay, that was one part of actually. Hmm. I think I had this. Is that too far back? Uh, let's do one more. One more up here. Okay, at this point, we're probably going to do the, the fast forward thing and just going to fast forward to ha having it mostly completed. Okay, okay, now there is our, our launch vehicle, a launch vehicle and our orbiter uh, as 
as it was in the original configuration, just with a bunch of RCS tanks added in there to divide up the fuel tanks. Now I'm going to put a bunch of fuel lines in here. Um, and I'm also going to put a bunch of RCS ports in this thing to try and give it uh, try and give it more controllability at higher altitudes. I want to see how high, how close to 30,000 can I actually get this thing before decoupling. All right, fuel lines, let's go. There we go. Okay, first thing I need, let me see here. First thing I need is to run a fuel line here. Oops, it's not going to work that way, is it? Maybe. Maybe on the belly. Yeah, we'll run these on the belly. That might be good. A good way to work this. Well, that's not going to work either, is it? That works. Okay, okay. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll look kind of ugly, but it, it, it'll work. Okay. And now the other change that I was thinking, and it's, and it's uh, slightly embarrassing to me that, that this did not occur to me earlier, was I can, I can go ahead and I can use uh, my orbiter's engine here for, for launch and the climb to altitude. Okay, so it's it, the orbiter, it takes this engine, it takes its, its fuel from this little tank. The little tank takes its fuel from the tip tanks. The tip tanks take takes they take their fuel from our over and under tanks, all four of these. I just need to make one change here, and I need to put some more fuel lines, and I need to see the four over and under tanks need to take their fuel right from the same central fuel tank. Uh, I mean, I should have figured it's, it's just like the real space shuttle, right? Should have figured that out a long time ago. And that way I can use, and this thing will not be such dead weight, and that also helped the whole problem with it snapping off from the, the force, the g-force is dragging on it, if, if it, this thing is actually producing thrust, because what is that engine? Uh, how much thrust does that engine produce? That was 300, wasn't it? Um, let's see, I went with Consistent safe power. Yeah, max thrust 300 in this booster that I strapped onto that thing earlier. It, it'll, it yeah, it had 230. This is for, for no weight penalty. Um, well, you know, or negligible weight penalty because the fuel lines do weigh something. Uh, I will actually have more thrust than when I had that solid rocket booster strapped onto there. And in theory, um, my orbiter won't use any fuel out of all these tanks. Kind of a cobweb, isn't it? All right, okay, uh, RCS port. Let's put a bunch of RCS ports in this thing. Okay, so there, okay, so now the mothership should have some basic attitude keeping capabilities at altitude. Okay, okay, I think we're going to give this a shot, see what happens here. Even the 
joystick, try not to knock the microphone. Oh, come on guys, this, is this the one where it's going to work? This is the one, I can feel it. Launch. And we're fairly steady on the pad, hardly wobbling at all. Looks like I actually got that lined up pretty straight for once. <laughs> Give it some throttle. Okay, check on the controls, everything working, yep. All right, there goes nothing. I have one, no, that's, that's all six engines firing. I just couldn't see the other five for a second there. Balance is pretty good. Throttle back, and, oh no, that's bad. Hang on. Hang on, do you see my orbiter's engine? It just ran dry. That's bad. Why did it do that? Okay, okay guys, let's... And we've got a... This thing keeps pitching down. Losing altitude. Can I pull up? See it kind of bending in the middle. Oh. Okay, well, why? It's that the orbiters in. Wait a second. Oh, wait a second. And we're also, we've got other tanks running out of fuel here. Other, uh, other. I don't... I don't think that we're... There are fuel tanks. I don't think that we're... Yeah, we're not draining the... I don't think we're draining all the fuel the way I planned. Maybe I'm, I'm not understanding these fuel lines as well as I thought I was. And too low to... Oh, man. Okay. There's nothing for it, guys. Here, let's try it this way. Woo! Slow down. There's a big boom, huh? Okay, okay. I'm obviously not understanding the fuel lines like I thought I like I thought I understood them. Here, get a bunch of RCS and burn it up. I'm just gonna, yeah, just thrusting away with the RCS. Or last or last ditch emergency thrust system here. Okay, okay, back to the drawing board. It's no, it was acting like it was not drawing the fuel that it needed at all. I don't understand this. Turn RCS off and just glide in. Got three happy Kerbals. Slow down, slow down a little bit more. Thing is so easy to land. I love it. Okay. 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 Well, my crew survived that one. It was, it was a very, very gentle failure of the of the vehicle. Let's see what it has to say to me. 
Separation is stage six. Lift off. Those decouplers damaged by engine exhaust. Right. And then there's the whole crash. 